The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Vision New England's uh, lunch webinar series. We're excited that you decided to spend your lunch hour with us. And we have a great speaker on tap today. We're going to be talking about the three keys to uh, pastoral or effective pastoral leadership. And today we're going to be talking about uh, church structures and systems. And with us today we have Ryan Howell, who is the Vision New England president and lead pastor of Curtis Lake Church in Sanford, Maine. And before we get started, um, we're just going to talk about a couple of quick logistics. We're going to do our best to try to be done today by 1245. And if you had any quick questions, uh, right on your dashboard to the right, you'll notice an opportunity where you can send a chat question or you can raise your hand. There's a raise your hand function. I encourage you to use the chat uh, section at any time, and Ryan will uh, stop and uh, we'll interject your question right away. Um, so without further ado, uh, Ryan Howell is here today. Ryan, thank you for joining us today. Hey, my pleasure. We're really excited to hear what you uh, have for us. Yeah, no, thanks a lot, Mike, and uh, I'm excited to be here to really talk about uh, a subject that I love, and because uh, it's been so important to me um, and our church, and so just a little bit of history about our church, because I feel like I'm here definitely to talk about what we've found to be really helpful, um, and so if I can just take a minute and share a little bit of history, um, I came here to Curtis Lake Church in 2008, and uh, in 2008, our church was um, uh, really in a great position. We felt like, in a lot of ways, felt like God was uh, really calling us to make some changes, and the church was excited about that. And at the time, the church was running about 275 people, so very, you know, in one sense, strong. Kind of a in a New England setting, to have 275 people at a church was really exciting, and um, we felt like we had this great base. But um, God began to move really very quickly, and we started to see growth. And uh, within the first kind of six, seven months, we had moved to two services, and uh, we just we were trying to figure out how do we maintain this growth? How do we uh, not get in the way of it? And and we just began to see all this growth happen, and that's when I got introduced to the idea of structures and systems, and really a systematic approach to um, church, and what are the systems of a healthy church. And so we began to um, function and think in terms of principles for systems that can help us maintain health, and the systems that we're going to talk about today are all systems that I think have been crucial in helping us be organized well as a church to facilitate the growth that God was causing and what God was bringing to our church. And so. You know, fast forward now, um, six years later, uh, we've just seen God do some really incredible things, and we run four services now, three on Sunday, one on Monday night. Uh, we've seen our attendance grow to um, about a 1,000 people every weekend in worship, and we've also seen just what we feel is real qualitative growth in uh, our people, qualitative growth in uh, the lives of people, lots of people coming to Christ, lots of baptisms, and we think one of the keys to us being able to you know, see God do this great stuff has been how we've managed and organized ourselves. It's not necessarily the programs, but it's the principles that are behind some of the programs we've chosen. So I'm excited to talk about the, the systems approach to organization of ministry. Um, and uh, as we start talking about it, just some things that have really influenced me in my thinking and in the way we think of systems here at Vision New England has been um, First of all, Church Leader Insights with Nelson Searcy. We, I personally have gone through two or three years of coaching, uh, three years of actually coaching with Nelson and Church Leader Insights and Church Systems and Structure. A great book about living systems uh, there at Emmanuel Gospel Center, Doug Hall, The Cat and the Toaster. Uh, Christian Schwartz's uh, book, Paradigm Shift in the Church, and then the whole natural church development um, process we've become big fans of uh, here at Vision New England leverage that tool to help churches understand qualitative growth and organization and so all of these have kind of helped influence the way we think about church systems and structures and what are important in that and so just real quickly I'd love to share a couple of scriptures related to structures and systems that sometimes we think that structures and systems are contrary to the organic growth of God but I don't see it that way. Um, we really believe that they go hand in hand. And so um, 
one great passage is obviously First Corinthians, just as a body, though one has many parts, uh, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. We're all baptized by one spirit, so to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we're all given the one spirit to drink it, even so the body is uh, not made up of one part, but of many. Uh, and, and I think the idea here is that this imagery of the body of Christ, um, that bodies have systems, right? And so if we're the body of Christ all together collectively, it's important, I think, that we recognize that, well, you know what? Um, that just like our human bodies have systems, our respiratory system, our cardiovascular system, um, all of these different, our muscular system, our skeletal system, the church itself also as a living organism, as a living system, is made up of different systems that all function together to form health. And we love that imagery, and that's why I think this approach to systems is important as we think about the health of our local churches. Um, Psalm 90 says, this is one of my favorite passages um, about planning and the tension between our part and God's part. It says, may the favor of the Lord our God rest on us, establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Um, the New Living Translation says, um, make our efforts successful. And I think that's the heartbeat, is that, Lord, we want our work be a part of your your work, and we want to make sure that um, our work is connected with what God's dream is for us, and so we ask for God's favor to set on us, and we have to put our hands to it. There's work involved in, uh, I think, leading and managing a growing and healthy church. Um, Acts chapter 6, I'm not going to read these verses, but you know, many of us are probably familiar with it, that you know, as soon as growth starts to happen in the local church, there's arguments about um, people who aren't being fed and, and who's being taken care of. And I love that you know, these passages describe kind of the first system that ever gets established, right? The apostles say, hey, it's not good for us to be worried about some of these things. Let's, let's choose seven people who can take and handle this responsibility. And so they created the very first system in the church to make sure that everybody got fed appropriately and cared for appropriately. And so it, in this way, I think that systems are important. And some definitions that are, are good for us to begin thinking about is that, you know, a system is a regularly interacting or interdependent group of items forming a unified whole. And that's just to say that our church is made up of these systems that form a whole. And, uh, and, and in some ways, they're living systems. They react. They, they, they're complex. And in some ways, we develop systems that are more process-based and driven. Um, structures are the way that a group of people are organized, the way that something is built or arranged. And so we, when we talk about church structures, we're saying, OK, how is the organizational side of a church built and established um, so that it can be healthy and so that it can grow and holding those that intention of okay what's our organizational responsibility versus the organic growth that God causes and then we talk about processes as well that this is a series of action or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end and so when we talk about church structures and systems we're really talking about processes that we can establish um, things that we can set in place that will save us time and energy and money and not have to reinvent the wheel every time you know we want to do something and so that's really what we're we're talking about is how do we establish structures and systems in our church that help us see the organic growth that God has for us first Corinthians talks about um, all these people working hard but God's the one who's making it grow and, and I love this that you know who, who's Apollos and what's Paul um, you know, the Lord assigned each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God is making it grow. I think it's important here that we recognize somebody has to plant and somebody has to water, and yes, God causes the growth. And so the establishment of structures and systems that are effective in our church are about doing the watering and doing the planting, but God is the one who causes all of this growth. Um, and God also, you know, through Paul in 1 Corinthians, gives us this analogy of building a home. Right, that we're all co-workers in God's service, that we're God's field, we're God's building, and by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building on it, but each one should build with care. Right? We can't just throw everything and say, well, you know what, it's God's responsibility to grow the church. I think that's contrary to what Scripture teaches, that, yep, God causes growth, but we're called to build with care. We don't lay on any foundation other than Jesus Christ, but we do build on that, and we do have work that we're supposed to accomplish. And all this to just quickly say that I personally, and at Vision New England, we really do believe that there is this tension that has to be balanced between, yes, we expect and we await and we believe that God causes organic growth, 
but we are responsible on some side to create the atmosphere for that growth to happen in and to make sure that our work isn't hindering the organic growth of God. A great example, and I think an image, is if you've seen like a vine on a lattice, that obviously God causes that vine to grow, but we have to build the lattice for that growth to take place on. And I believe that oftentimes the growth that we don't see is really not God, it's us. Um, God wants his church to grow. God wants our churches to be healthy. God wants certainly people to come to him. And our responsibility is to create that lattice work that's solid and strong so that when God brings people to us who he's calling, they can begin to grow and begin to experience his grace. So let's jump into kind of some of the systems. And Mike, please jump in if there's questions. Um, but here's the systems that we kind of cover and we go over. And I've kind of talked about them in terms of um, – the organic work of God and then the organizational responsibility. Again, trying to always hold in tension the balance. And really what we're doing is talking about these are the systems that we're going to be dealing with in our Vision One coaching. We actually spend one month of our coaching on, on a different system as part of it, and we get into really practical uh, ways to establish principles so that we create these systems that get into that get us into flow that get our churches organizationally into like this state of flow where great things are happening and God is moving and we're not getting in the way of the growth that God wants to um, take place so the first system is an empowering leadership system and it the organic work of God within this system is that God calls and brings local churches leaders to lead like we don't have any part in that. God is the one who raises up and brings and gives the gift of leadership, but we are responsible to identify, strengthen, and release leaders who empower others. And so this system asks the question, how in our church are we systematically identifying, strengthening, and releasing leaders who empower others? And the key word is empower, and if you're familiar with the natural church development work, um, you know that empowering leadership is one of those quality characteristics of a healthy church. And so we kind of go beyond principles and say, well, well, how do we apply those principles? What do we do systematically? And in a system, we ask these questions. What do we do every year, every quarter, every six months, every week, every day, every month? What are those things that happen on a recurring basis so that we're constantly and you know, identifying, strengthening, releasing leaders? So that's the empowering leadership system. Um, Second system is the gift-based ministry system. The organic work of God is God gives gifts to build his church. That you know, in, in the pews, in the chairs, whatever you know, setting your church is, there are people who have all kinds of gifts that God has given. Um, and that's wonderful. We don't give those gifts. It's impossible for me to say as a pastor, boy, you have the gift of hospitality. I bestow that upon you. You know, we don't do that. God does that. But our responsibility as church leaders is to support and equip people in the discovery and use of their gifts in significant ministry. So how are we as local churches doing that? How are we as organizationally saying, well, what do we do to make sure that people can discover and use those gifts in significant ministry? Because as people employ their gifts, as people use their gifts, you know, obviously the kingdom grows, people find fulfillment, they find uh, incredible amounts of fact and joy as they use their gifts in ministry. And so this is really about getting people involved. How does our church do that? I've never been to a church that, you know, would say, you know, we could never use more people using their gifts. We could never use, you know, or excuse me, never been anywhere that says we've got all the volunteers we need. We really don't need any more. I think all of our churches are looking for ways to get people involved and engaged in, in ministry. And so how do we do that systematically? How do we make sure we have good systems in place? That's what the gift-based ministry system is all about. Um, third here system that we work on is the passionate spiritual formation system. Uh, this is about how, it, how does a church do we develop uh, disciples who are passionate for Christ? passionate in their growth, and the organic work of God is God provides his presence and insights that grow us spiritually. Like We have nothing to do with that. I mean, God provides our ability to sense him, to experience him. He gives us insights as we read scripture, as we worship, as we live in community, as we develop generosity, things like that. Um, that's, that's all the work of God, but as a church and as church leaders, we have the responsibility to create pathways clear pathways that, the, that allow for the development of passionate disciples who are capable of personal growth and committed to Christ in this church. Obviously, the key here is what's the clear pathway for people in our churches to develop? Um, how are they learning to 
grow personally, self-care, self-feed, and are they growing in their commitment to Christ in this church? Are they passionate about those things? And uh, believe it or not, there are things that as a church we can do to make that possible. Um, we can create pathways that make it easy for people to kind of say, okay, uh, here's where I can take my next steps in my spiritual growth. And while God causes that growth, as a church we can set up structures and systems that allow for it to happen easier and so people aren't wandering around going, how do I grow in my faith? You know, we can create that, those pathways that help that take place. So that's the passionate spiritual formation system. The next system that we deal with is the generous stewardship system. If you're on the phone and you're a pastor, this is one that you probably love is this idea of, well, how do we encourage people to become generous stewards of the gifts that God has given them financially? Um, how are we helping people grow in that area? So the organic work of God is God provides the earthly resources, right? I mean, God provides for us our jobs. God provides our income, all those things. But how are we as a church consistently helping people grow in that? And so the organizational responsibility is to instruct, inspire, and provide opportunities for generous and obedient stewards to joyfully invest earthly resources for eternal reward. And so the question is, how, how at our church do we create extravagant givers? Uh, I'm a big fan of these two words, generous and obedient giving. Uh, we want people in our churches to give obediently, and we want people to give generously. How are we doing that? Oftentimes, our strategy when it comes to stewardship is when the budget isn't being met. That's when we talk about giving, um, and that's that's a pretty poor strategy that really doesn't promote inspiration. Um, and so we really talk about what are the ways in our churches, what are the principles that can be applied, um, really regardless of our context, to help people grow in being generous and obedient, which results in more resources so that we can do more kingdom work in our communities, so we can bring the gospel to more people. And uh, there are systematic ways of, of helping release that in people, even though it's God who provides those resources and stirs hearts, we create, again, these pathways for generosity. And so uh, this is a, a system that was really helpful for me, actually, believe it or not, this is one of the first systems that I began to think about as I became a, a senior pastor. I remember thinking to myself, man, I'm responsible now for all this, all the paying of the bills. I'm responsible for, you know, encouraging people to give. I'm responsible for, you know, all that's going to fall on me if I'm not careful. And so how do I do that? How do I help people grow in giving? How do we move people from, you know, first time giver to maybe tithing and then moving beyond that to giving above and beyond tithing. And so this was one of the first systems that I really focused in on at our church and learned a lot about to say, okay, how do we do this on a regular basis so people don't feel like, well, we only talk about money when there's a need, but rather we talk about the need to be generous, things like that. So that's the stewardship system. And then the effective strategic system. Again, this is one of my favorite systems to talk about. I love strategic planning. I love the idea of of, okay, God, what are you calling us to do? So the organic work of God is God provides the vision for contextualized ministry. So God gives every church leadership, every church its vision for how to do ministry in its own context. That's what God calls you to do, his preferred future. What's God's dream for your church? What's God's dream for your ministry? The reality is God has a big dream for our churches. God has a big dream for New England. God has a big dream for Vision New England. God has a big dream for, you know, First Baptist Church, First Congregational Church, all the first churches that are out there. I mean, God has big dreams for us, um, but we have a responsibility as well, and our organizational responsibility is to define or develop, plan, oversee, and evaluate the effectiveness of the organizational life of our church. So. You know, developing those vision statements, the mission statements, the kind of what do we believe God wants to accomplish in our church this next year, over the next three years, planning that. What's our oversight structure? How do we evaluate whether we were successful or not? How do we evaluate whether we accomplished what God really put in our hearts? And so this strategic system uh, is about how do we create effective structures? How do we monitor that? Um, What's our, what's our oversight structure in our church? How do we um, make sure that people are held accountable? If you have people who are paid staff, how are we holding them accountable? Volunteers, how are they being held accountable um, to the work that God has called them to do? So this is, a, again, one of my more favorite systems, to be honest with you, to talk about, because I just personally love kind of strategic planning. It, it's this partnering with God, that belief that God has called our church, our churches to do something, and 
it goes back to, okay, Lord, make our plans successful. Establish the work of our hands. Guide us and direct us. And how do we oversee that work as it's taking place? So that's the effective strategic system. And then the inspiring worship planning system. Like how do we, um, how do we plan and implement and evaluate worship services that are inspiring to people. The organic work is obviously God transformed lives in corporate worship. There's something powerful about people coming together in the experiential nature of his presence. And we can't transform lives. You know, if you're in here and you're a teacher or you're listening, you're a worship leader, um, you know that you don't change and transform lives. It's God who does that. In, and oftentimes it happens in a corporate worship setting. Um, but we are responsible for that time. We're responsible to prepare, execute, and evaluate inspiring, relevant, and welcoming worship services. And when we do that, we can see people's lives transformed. And so we, we work with God. We work with the Holy Spirit. We say, okay, what do you want us to do? So how, as a church, do we prepare? How do we actually execute the, the actual worship service? And how do we evaluate it? How do we ask the question, hey, how did it go? Were we successful? Was the message clear? Was the worship inspiring? Um, were people challenged? What did people feel? And so we talk in the worship planning system about how do you develop that um, as a church? How do you think through, okay, what is it that God is calling us to teach? What is it that, What are the principles God wants us to bring out of Scripture? And, and the thing I love about the worship planning system has nothing to do with style. Right. I mean, every church is going to have their own style. Some churches are going to be liturgical and high form and high function, and some are not non-liturgical and are lower form and function. But inspiring worship really is not about the style of worship. It's about how you plan and do things with excellence and create a way in which people can experience God's presence clearly in a way that they understand and be transformed in his midst. And, and we do have a part in that to create that excellent atmosphere. So the worship planning system says, how in our church do we do that? What are the decisions that we're making? What is worship? Understanding and discovering what our theology of worship is for our church, what our philosophy of worship planning is going to be. Um, and so we work through some of those principles as well. And then the holistic small group system. Um, this system is based upon the, the research there with NCD that says, you know, healthy, growing churches display this quality characteristic of small groups. And I happen to think of small groups a little different in terms of just, I don't get into me personally think about, well, if it's at somebody's home, then it's a small group. Or I think Sunday school classes oftentimes fit into small groups. So I'm not down on Sunday school or anything like that. But I just think we have to be thinking through how are we connecting people into smaller groups where intimacy can take place, where people are learning to trust one another. And so the organic work of God is obviously God puts the desire in us to love his word and live in community. Because small group is about, you know, community life and loving one another and digging into God's word oftentimes. And God puts that desire in us. Um, but our responsibility as church leaders, I think, is to fill and multiply small groups that are committed to loving relationships, biblical, spiritual insights, and serving others. So how are we creating that? How are we making sure that we're not just offering classes, but we're offering groups that love one another, that are gaining insights into biblical and spiritual truths, and that are committed to serving each other, this holistic idea. And so we talk about small group strategies. And the great thing about a contextualized coaching like what we're doing at Vision New England is we're, we're listening to what small group strategies are working around New England and, uh, and saying, OK, can we discover principles that can help us be more effective and get people into groups and group life and the timing of small groups. And we can learn from one another really in a highly um, contextualized way because we all know New England is a unique place and within New, New England it's very unique from rural settings to urban settings to um, you know different states but we can learn from one another and uh, and see okay what's been working and getting people connected into groups that uh, that are really focused on loving relationships biblical and spiritual insights and serving others and then uh, finally this intentional evangelism system one of my favorite systems is um, We've actually done some seminars on this system already, and we'll be offering more. But um, this is really the heartbeat of, I, I think, Vision New England is intentional evangelism. The heartbeat of um, our churches should be about reaching unchurched people, my personal opinion. And so the Holy Spirit calls men and women to Jesus, right? I mean, we know that. That's what's happening. And that's not our responsibility. But we do have a responsibility to equip compassionate disciples to engage in corporate servant evangelism and personal disciple making. How in a church are we consistently keeping the evangelism temperature high? How are we focused on helping people understand the call to go and make disciples? 
And discipleship, we really believe, begins with people who are pre-Christian. That discipleship is not something that happens once someone makes a profession of faith, but rather, you know, making disciples is about first reaching people who believe that they're far from God, who believe that, you know, maybe God doesn't have a place in their life, or even those who are exploring uh, faith. So how as a church are we doing that systematically? And how, what are we doing every year? every six months, every quarter, every month, every week, every day to keep that temperature high, to make sure that we are creating processes whereby it makes it easy for people to engage in evangelism. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians are afraid of this word evangelism uh, because they think of something awful um, that is very difficult. But the evangelism system is really the opposite about how do we make sharing our faith accessible and natural and how do we do that with people. And then the final system is our connection system, sometimes called assimilation. And the word assimilation I just, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, I get it, but it just, I always feel like you know, a cyborg, we will assimilate you to be just like us. But um, the idea is how, how do we help get people connect um, to the life of church, to move from first-time guest to really devoted follower of Christ and, and member of our church, whatever that language is your church might use. And um, the organic work of God is that God adopts us through the work of Jesus Christ. We become a part of the family of God um, because of the work of Christ. We have nothing to do with that. God adopts us. But what we want to do as churches is create an atmosphere for loving relationships to flourish as people move from first-time guest to you know, member, family member of the local church. So how are we helping people, um, once they become a first-time guest, move to second-time guest, to regular attender, to member or ministry partner or whatever language your church might use, the idea is how are we helping people connect more and more with one another in the church? This oftentimes deals with kind of our follow-up um, processes, what do those look like? Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there about, you know, what's the best way to follow up with guests, and um, those are all programs, and those are great, but I think what we want to do with this, look at principles, and then we can all share and, and discover some processes that have worked in certain settings and that can help us present and make people less afraid of showing up at our churches um, for a second time or even a first time. So those are the systems that we talk about. They're all kind of connected in um, to, uh, to one another. Believe it or not, they overlap. And uh, we just tend to look at, at how are we doing in those systems. At our church, we take a system every month, evaluate the things that are in place, uh, look to make sure that it's a strong system and uh, something that people can uh, move through, something that uh, is understandable, something that helps the strength of our church and the quality of our church, not just the quantity of how many people are coming. So I know that is just a really, really high flyby of um, systems that we deal with and a, a great way to kind of think about the processes in our churches. Um, and, and so in our coaching network, we actually – you know, each month spend a couple of hours just dealing with, okay, what does that system look like? What are the principles? Um, and how do we apply them so that our churches can grow in quality and in quantity? If our churches are healthy, you know, obviously we believe healthy churches are growing churches. So, um, yeah, so that's what we have going on. And I'd love to, if there's any questions, I know we just kind of did this high-flying overview of them, but uh, Mike, I don't know if there's any questions that anybody might have or uh, anything regarding these systems. Hi, Ryan. Again, thank you so much for your time. At this point, we don't have any questions, but I have one for you. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if you could ch chat a little bit in terms of the implementation process of some of these systems. Are there, are, yeah. are, is there an optimal order of implementing some of these systems, or which one? I yeah. mean, in your experience, what have you found? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. There's two there's two ways to go about that. One is within the coaching network, um, as part of the coaching network, everybody goes through, your church will go through the Natural Church Development Survey. And so what that Natural Church Development Survey is, it's a way to identify these eight quality characteristics, these eight quality characteristics in your church, in your and, then church and then thinking about how do you, what's, what's my, my minimum, minimum factor, factor? where's my strength, where are my weaknesses? <laughs> And so one way to look at it is to say, okay, how do we, whatever our minimum factor is, say loving relationships were our minimum factor, then you would look at the systems that can boost that and work on those. That's one way to think about it. Um, so leveraging a tool like the NCD survey. So you might take the survey and find, well, our minimum factor, which is hindering our growth, is our small groups. 
Um, and so you might say, well, let's focus on the small group system and let's get that system going. The other thing we say is like the, the connection system, the assimilation system, a lot of times we start with that with people because it's very easy. You're going to have guests come regardless of you know, your worship service, regardless of anything else. God brings guests into our churches. And so it's a very um, easy system to get started and to just begin to think more intentionally about what is our follow-up process, what does it mean for a person to have to go from first-time guest to second-time guest to regular attender to member. Um, and so that's a, a really easy system to get started with. Um, I, I happen to think that that and the evangelism system are, are a lot of times really good systems to think about because we all want more people to come. We all want um, people to be actively engaged in you know, reaching their family and friends with Christ and introducing them to Christ. So those are two systems um, that generically we could, without ever looking at a church, just say, hey, you know, go for this and start there. But the NCD survey does oftentimes help with deciding where are we our weakest in these quality characteristics, and that may be the system you want to focus in on and develop a plan to implement. Okay, do we have any other? Does that make sense? It does. Do we have any other questions? We did have one from Paul. Paul uh, asked if he actually missed the first session of the webinar series, and the answer is no. We actually had to postpone that due to an illness from the speaker, so you haven't missed anything. Back, uh, we'll be re-offering that on the 18th of September, so although this is um, listed as uh, key two, it really is the first session of the, of the three-part series. Uh, so any other quick questions before we kind of move on and kind of end things? Uh, seeing none, uh, Ryan is certainly available if you had any questions. Uh, you could feel free to contact him via email and phone. I gave all that contact information on that slide. And if you're looking for additional information on Vision New England and uh, other sessions in the three-part series, feel free to go on to our webpage. And we're really excited to give you a bird's eye view of each of the three portions of the Pastoral Coaching Network. But really, we're excited to offer this uh, service to all churches throughout New England and uh, leaders, not just pastors, but all church leaders. Uh, we'll be starting it this fall. We'll have four cohort cohorts starting up uh, in Maine, Portland, Maine, Nashville, New Hampshire, uh, Connecticut, Fairfield, Connecticut, and Wayland, Massachusetts. So if you're interested I'm, in I'm learning, to a seminar. Uh, uh, if you're interested in learning more about the Coaching Network, uh, we'll also be uh, having lunches where you can learn about the network and how it's going to operate. Uh, we really do. Uh, we're very excited to be offering this product and, and uh, service to uh, churches throughout New England. So feel free to learn more about it. And additionally, we're all. Oh, go ahead, Ryan. I, I was just going to say, I, just a plug for coaching and the idea of regularly meeting with somebody every month and with a group of people. Um, I I just grew so much as in the practical leadership of you know our church through coaching and. You know, I, I, I just, I am so excited about this because it's affordable, it's attainable, we've, we've set it up so that people don't have to drive very far, but, you know, just from a, a standpoint of how, ben I just, the, the benefit that I experienced as a person with, I mean, I had been in ministry, I grew up in the church, I went to Bible college, had my master's degree, but just the practical nuts and bolts stuff that I was able to get in the relationships and to learn from other people in the trenches um, is such a great investment of time. Um, and I had to travel. I mean, I just there wasn't one of these kind of networks when I was looking, and so I had to kind of travel really far for it. And I just am really excited about it, Mike, and just from a personal testimony standpoint of how helpful coaching was to just feel like I had somebody and had people that I could talk to about what was going on, who got it, who understood it. You know, to have that day once a month where I was kind of working on the church and not at it um, was just so valuable. So just a personal testimony of how wonderful it was for us, for well, me. Well, I tell you, that's a great comment. And we're hoping that through the webinar series as well, you'll get some key insight into some of the content items within the coaching network. So you'll get a, just maybe it's a bird's eye view or a very high up picture, but at least you'll kind of understand uh, exactly what the coaching network is going to be covering. We're really excited to be able to have uh, Keith Tolley, who will be speaking on September 4th. He'll talk a little bit about some leadership principles 
uh, and, and again, giving you just a teaser into uh, some of the content that we'll be providing at the, in the network. And then on September 18th, uh, we'll also be showing uh, some additional information on the uh, spiritual formation side of uh, the Pastoral Coaching Network. So look for more of that, and we'll be sure to publish. And people can visit. People can visit the website right too, and Absolutely. we've got a great page that gives the dates that each one of these start, the network start, and it also goes through. What are it, 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 it reiterates the topics so you can there's a click you can click on a box and it shows you the leadership skills topics the structures and system topics all that stuff you've done a great job Mike on the website with making that accessible you can register right there on the website for um, for the network so everything's right there and absolutely and we're certainly uh, accessible for any kind of questions that you might have that aren't covered on the web page and we're also really excited uh, to offer uh, another opportunity on September uh, 17th we uh, Vision New England is co-sponsoring the Activate Leadership Conference it's a great opportunity to come out for a day and get fed and learn a little bit about some uh, leadership principles so some cutting-edge leadership principles there's some great speakers Ed Young Jr. will be there uh, so it will really it'll be a great and encouraging opportunity to kind of spend some time with other pastors and learn some uh, great uh, information so feel free to go on that web page and register I do believe that they still have a early bird registration fee uh, that I think goes until September 1st so feel free to get on online and learn more about that uh, program as well and there's a special rate too for churches under a hundred there's a special rate as well so just mm -hmm. trying to make this as accessible as possible Gordon McDonald will be there Ed Young jr. Um, it's going to be really uh, a great uh, a great a great day yeah, absolutely. Well, again, thank you everyone for attending. We hope you enjoy our webinar series. We do ask that if, if you do enjoy it and want to help us to offer this free to all churches in New England and actually throughout the world, uh, feel free to go online and donate and, and support Vision New England and the, the ministries that we provide. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization and really rely on your uh, generosity in terms of providing services to churches in New England. Uh, and before we end, I just thought maybe uh, if you don't mind if I pray for everyone online and, and pray for churches in New England in general. Father God, we, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you're doing amazing things in New England. Lord, we thank you for every church and leader represented today. And we pray, Lord God, that you um, would just equip us to uh, implement any uh, systems and processes that might make us more effective for you, Father God. And, and we do thank you for the the influence that uh, the church has in New England and pray that you would just empower and embolden us, Lord God, to share your word uh, and to share the love of Jesus for those uh, it, for those in New England that might not have uh, heard about you. And, and, and Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you're doing in, uh, in our churches locally and throughout New England. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Ryan, and thank you everyone for attending. Hopefully we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Sounds good.